All right. Welcome, my friend, to the next episode in the Fit at Home podcast. When it comes to getting the best shape of your life, there's no place like home. As always, I'm your host, Matt Schifferly from the RedDeltaProject.com. And with me is my co-host here, Al Painter. Al, how's it going, man? Oh, pretty good. It's going very well, my friend. It's going very well. We had that. We had Matt and I had a really good conversation about <laughs> bike racers and how when you're not as fit as they are. They're not as fun to ride with, <laughs> but um, it's been pretty good. I, I'm actually finding out that home, and if I dare be so bold and cliche and dad joke, to say is where the heart rate is. I've been playing with that lately and uh, just trying to get in some extra kind of 20 on, 10 off kind of stuff with, with bands and just move a little bit since I'm not able to get out on the bike. And one of the things I've been playing with is um, the old school, the, the seated row VD handle, whatever those things are called. The narrow, narrow handles, the, the yeah, closed yeah, handles for the road. Here and it's got the V, you know, yep. and um, oh man, game changer, game, set, match for my pulling scapular retraction so much easier I can get into the, the low traps and rhomboids. Oh, oh, one of the best purchases I've made this pandemic season. Yeah, it's amazing what just a little bit of a different angle can make, like just a little cable attachment handle or yeah, yeah. you usually do things overhand, do them over underhand or neutral or something. Little things like that can really just add some new flavor to the workout and the exercise and make it feel new and refreshed. A lot of times when we think, I got to do something different, and instead of doing an overhead press, we go and we rock climb. <laughs> we make right. these huge changes in our program. I was like, no, you literally only need to change a small, tiny little bit. Oh, instead of an incline bench press at 30 degrees, I'm going to go to 40 degrees. And, and that's my change. And that's really what a lot of times when you come across studies and stuff saying variation is very good and stuff. They're not talking about changing things up in radical ways. They're talking about... I like to say it's changing the flavor of yeah. the exercise. It's like having, uh, you know, strawberry ice cream with chocolate sauce versus strawberry ice cream with whipped cream. You're not really changing that much about what it is, but you're changing the flavor of it. And that can really make a difference. So yeah, changing the flavor is what you did there. And uh, you went to butterscotch, I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You spell cookies and cream wrong twice, by the way. Oh, oh. <laughs> It's always my thing is I, I can't spell. And here's the thing is I, I can spell okay, but my mind is such when it gets locked on something, it'll glaze over something uh, that's spelled wrong or I'll think a certain way a million times. Like in math, this would happen all the time where I'd be like two plus two equals eight. And they'd be like, really, Matt? I'm like, two plus two equals eight. And I just sit there for 10 minutes going, two plus two, why is that wrong? Why is that wrong? Because you just get mentally stuck in a rut. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, at like 2 a.m., I'd be like, oh, of course, you know, <laughs> now I see it. <laughs> but it's the same thing with, with spelling. Uh, you know, for the longest oh. time, people are like, this is spelled wrong. And I'd be like, I don't see it, which is why I need a spell checker. Not because I need to know how to spell it. It's because I need something to tell me it's spelled wrong. Because I'll look at that word a million times and be like, yeah, that's right. And I, I won't even see it. Won't even see oh, it. Yeah, yeah. I got a journalism degree, dude. And I still, I, I, I need spell check. <laughs> <laughs> I was taught collegially how to write the sentence of the English language. And I still need help. <laughs> yep. All just goes to show you that you can always learn to do things better. And right? to never think that you're above the basics on anything in life that uh, uh, at the end of the day, we're still all reading at a first grade level. <laughs> I don't know if I passed that maturity level yet. So I'm right there with you. Dude. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm still a 12 year old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into some of the tips we have for do it. the week here. Uh, these are the things that will improve your workout, dear listener. And uh, things that you can apply to make the next seven days of your workouts more effective. Al, what's your tip of the week for your workouts here? My tip of the week for the workouts is when possible, go outside and play, people. You know, obviously weather permitting, right? That kind of thing. Get outside and play or exercise. I, I love it. The other day, uh, I took the kids to the park. 
and I took uh, uh, the uh, actually the monkey bar strap for the pocket monkey thing there, mm-hmm. threw it around a tree, and I hooked up some bands, and I had me a, a cable station, and I did a bunch of agility stuff, and basically things that look like playing baseball. I did with the bands, got the heart rate up at the park, trees. Kids laughing, uh, uh, the, the smelled amazing, and outdoor sunshine, everything else. It was amazing, amazing, amazing. If you take the kids to the park, you know, there's no reason why they should be the only ones. Because you go and you see loads of parents with their phones and everything else. Like, no, do something. Take some bands, take some the sandbag or straps, whatever, right? Uh, perked me right up. I was dragging. And then we got there, and I was like, yeah, let's do this. Uh, you know, I got a little vitamin D. It got to be around other human beings. You know, we're all wearing masks, but around other human beings. It was a nice way to break up the monotony of, of being here at home. And uh, the more scenic, the better. In the fall, there's a park around here. <laughs> it looks like a perfect Bob Ross painting, you know? It's like, oh, happy trees, reds here, and, you know, all this kind of thing in the fall. And it is such a picturesque place to, to throw a suspension trainer over when the kids are playing. Love it. Go outside and get some vitamin O, people. Fantastic. Yeah, just being outside, there's just nothing that compares to it. There really yeah. isn't. And there's so many benefits to the fresh air and the sunlight and the wind. And I, I re- remember there was a time I was listening to a, a, a lecture by someone who is in um, the business of treating people with chronic pain. Mm-hmm. And these are people who are just in constant pain from whatever ailment they have. And he said, the most effective thing we often do is just get people outside. If they get outside, their level of pain decreases just being outside. They're not even doing exercise or anything to just be outside. And I think there's a lot to be taken away from that. Do not think of that as a trivial thing, my friends, that it, he's dead serious. Like this can be a very big game changer for us. Now, my tip of the, the day is kind of a, a little bit going... It seems contradictory to what we were talking about earlier, but my tip is use fewer exercises per muscle group in your workouts. And there's a number of reasons for this. One is it's going to drastically decrease the amount of time and energy needed for your workouts. And two is it gives you the ability to greatly increase the intensity of your workout as well. So we only have so much energy that we can put in. Like you can either sprint for a short distance or you can run long like a marathon at at an easier intensity. And one of the biggest mistakes I find people making and I used to make a lot is they have too many exercises that just dilute the intensity and eat up a ton of time and energy in their workouts. Like for me, when I had my first home gym, I had like one of these things with uh, a bunch of different handles and grips and stuff. And we were just talking about different grips. So I would, in my workouts, I had to do three sets of 10 with every conceivable little grip that I had for pulling, for pull downs and everything. I had all this time that I was doing. And it might seem a little hypocritical. It was like, well, we were just talking about changing things up and stuff. Yes, but again, remember the analogy I made you're changing up the flavor, but fundamentally, you're not really doing anything that different, right? You're eating chocolate ice cream with sprinkles, chocolate ice cream with whipped cream. Is it really making that big a difference in your diet? No, you're not. It's still ice cream. It's not like you're eating a salad, right? You're not doing anything that different for your body. So my recommendation is always pick one major compound exercise per chain, right? A big push, a big pull and stuff. And then if you do want to add something else, make sure it's as different as possible for the same movement pattern. So if you're doing like pull downs, do single arm rows. So you're changing the angle, you're going from bilateral to unilateral, make it really different. Even though you're still working the same general muscle group, it's a pulling motion, make it as different as possible. So that way you're getting as much benefit out of two exercises. But if you're like, okay, I could do overhand and underhand and neutral grip and wide and narrow and stuff, it's not a big enough difference to really be worth the extra time and effort most of the time. And you're diluting the intensity, which is one of the things that's actually really most important in your workout. So keep the exercise selection small and keep the intensity pretty high. 
Very good. Okay, on to segment number two here, dietary tips. These are things that you can do to improve your diet over the next seven days, be in better shape, and potentially even a little bit leaner. So Al, what do you got for us? My dietary tip for the next seven days is to get more vitamin Z, people. Uh, sleep. Sleep is so huge to so many things physiologically, to the proper brain function, to cortisol levels, to appetite. I know that if I don't get a good night of sleep, my appetite is through the roof the next day and I am craving carbohydrates and sweets like you would not believe, right? It's going to help with weight loss. And I notice that when if I get a little puffy, the more I sleep, oddly enough, I look differently the next day, right? I recover better because I've had more sleep. Life is just easier when you allow the brain to rest. So sleep is my dietary tip. Absolutely. I fully, fully am behind that 100%. I've been making it a big point for me to get to bed earlier for the past several weeks. It's made a hell of a difference. Oh my, mm -hmm. it's better than any drug, my friends. Uh, it, we underestimate it because it's so accessible, but it's the most accessible stuff that can be the most potent. So definitely get enough sleep. My tip is to eat to a level of satisfaction. And so not feeling full, like eating to the point of like, oh, I can't believe I had the whole thing and you're just rolling out of the restaurant kind of thing. But at the same time, there's a, a device out there saying like eat to like 80% full and you're still a little hungry and stuff. This is a skill that is developed that is probably one of the most important skills in helping you regulate your energy level, your body fat levels, your appetite, your enzymes, your hormones that regulate your appetite. So much of our ability to control our diet and our weight as a whole comes from recognizing that point where we are satisfied, but not underfed or overfed. And the more important thing about that is it also gives you the ability to adjust according to your circumstances. So sometimes if I'm doing a lot of heavy activity on the weekend and stuff, you'll want to eat more because you're doing a lot more. Other times you don't need as much and your satiation point will adjust accordingly. So that way you're not just eating to clean your plate or eating to restrict yourself in some way, shape or form. Eating to a point of satisfaction where you feel good, like you're done with the meal and you feel like you can be somewhat active. You can go out for a walk, maybe not do a hard workout, but go out for a walk. You have cognitive, you can work and stuff. You don't feel like you need to take a nap. Just paying attention to that afterwards. And people say, well, how will I know? It's just the experience. Luckily, you get practice every single time you're eating a meal, right? You're going to get practice anyway. You might as well be more aware of being satisfied, not still wanting to a whole lot more, not being full, but hit that satisfaction point, you get better at it and everything about you want from healthy eating will come much more naturally for you on autopilot as well. Yeah. Your body's going to let you know if it wants something or if it needs something, right? Absolutely. I mean, if, as long as it's uh, not a, uh, like, cause you're too tired kind of thing. Cause you didn't sleep the night before, yeah. but if, if your body still wants food, it'll let you know, Hey, I'd like a little more protein or I'd like a little more of this, a little more of that. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, there's a lot of rhetoric in the dietary culture out there. of Don't trust yourself. Like, don't trust yourself. Caveman DNA is going to make you fat. You're going to, all we want to ever do is eat, 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 eat. It's not true at all. I mean, all you have to do is look at those food challenges that you see out there. Like, can you eat the 32 ounce steak or can you eat this in under an hour or whatever? And people are like in pain trying to clean this plate and eat this whole thing. Right your body does have signals that will say, hey, stop eating. But a lot of our dietary approaches actually numb us to these signals. And as a result, we're all sorts of out of whack. Like we prevent ourselves from eating when we're hungry. We force ourselves to eat when we're full. It's no wonder we're all messed up. So being aware of that satisfaction point is just about recalibrating your awareness of these things over time and the more you're aware of that, the easier it's going to be to prevent overeating, which leads to weight gain or undereating, which uh, screws up uh, a bunch of energy and recovery abilities and everything as well. Very good. All right. In our last segment here, 
fitness resources, things that we've used in the past that have greatly helped us that we're passing along to you that can help you in your workouts over the next seven days. Al, what's your resource of the week? My resource of the week, my friend, goes along the lines of the folks being taken outside into nature to feel better. A book by somebody by the name of Florence Williams, and she wrote a book called The Nature Fix, Why Nature Makes Us Happier, Healthier, and More Creative. And it was, yeah, you know, I've always felt a lot more relaxed in a forest and that kind of thing. And I never really thought about it. I just thought, eh, it's trees, kind of relaxing, it's cool. But there are physiological effects that have been studied by science. There's something called forest medicine now, uh, the forest bathing is used now to help people treat a forest bathing is you don't go out and bathe in the forest. You, just, you immerse yourself in a tree canopy for a certain segment of time. And there are some amazing, amazing benefits to spending as much time in nature as possible. And in the book, she talks about uh, it boosts the immune system. It can lower stress and anxiety, reduce cortisol levels. It, it reduces activity of the sympathetic nervous system. So that's fight or flight as well as blood pressure and heart rate go down. They, they took um, this group of super stressed out business people and they, they put them in a forest for a weekend. They took the vitals before and after uh, blood pressure and I believe cortisol levels and they somehow measured immune system function if I remember correctly. All of the numbers, the, the bad stuff dropped like a rock. The immune system activities exponentially skyrocketed and they were healthier, literally healthier by spending time in a forest. And, and their creativity, they tested that somehow too. Their creativity was through the roof. So definitely people go out, get this book. It's a really great read. It flows really well. She's got a really good way with words. And I really enjoyed it quite a bit. So The Nature Fix, Why Nature Makes Us Happier, Healthier, and More Creative by Florence Williams should definitely be in your library. Absolutely. And again, there's a link to that down below in the description too, if you want to just link directly to it and check that out immediately. Don't think, oh, I'll remember it when I get home. If you're listening in the car and stuff like literally like as soon as you can uh, start taking action on that. And my resources actually uh, along the same lines as well, because a lot of times when I bring up things like go outside and work out at a park and things, People are like, well, it's easy for you to say you live in Colorado. You've got the Rocky Mountains right there and everything. But the fact is, almost everywhere I've been in the world has outdoor resources that are just awesome to get into. You know, it's just no matter where you are, even in an urban jungle like Hong Kong, where I spent a spring break, there's amazing places to go and hang out outside. And one of the best ways to find these places, because they can literally be down the street and you're totally unaware of it, uh, is the simple maps application on your smartphone. When you turn on uh, your app there, you're, you're not just getting directions or anything, don't even need to search anything. When you look at that and you pinch to get kind of a, a bird's eye view, you're just looking for anything green. Just look for anything green in your local area or, or blue for waters and streams and stuff. And you're going to find in your vicinity there, tons of like parks, recreation areas. And then of course you can zoom in a lot of things, these things have names. So it might say something like, you know, Wilson Park or something. And then you can go online and Wilson Park and you get a website and you're like, oh look, they've got this apparatus that I can do pull-ups on and they've got this place to play with the kids. It, it, a lot of times in order to find these outdoor resources, we just need to look around. And the fastest and easiest way to do that is just the maps app on your phone. And you just look at it and you're like, oh, wow. And I did this when I moved into my new place uh, a couple of years ago. And I, I mean, I've lived in this town for almost seven years. I was like, I wonder what's near here and stuff. And I looked and there's this great park that's within walking distance of me. It's like this duck pond and there's a great place to hang suspension trainers and it's this amazing peaceful air it was literally down the street from where i used to live never knew it was there completely oblivious to it until i pulled up that because you're not just going to walk in a certain direction just aimlessly and stuff 
but your maps app will show you where these green and blue and little areas are and make it a lot easier to find and explore this stuff so you can get outside and be productive. Oh, so, so much so. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. It, it's funny. <laughs> when the kids and I go to a park, for some reason that I can't explain, we end up at a park that is prime real estate for bands or suspension trainer hanging. I don't know why that is, <laughs> but somehow that's what happens. And that's, that's yeah, straight up. I'm such a nerd. Like even on a bike ride, if we ride by a park or, or just a bunch of trees or something, I'll kind of look around and think, oh, that'd be a good tree. Oh, that'd be a good tree. And the fact is right by our house, there's a park and it's got this perfectly horizontal branch that's about eight feet up that you can just, I threw lines over the original monkey bars, right? And that was like, that was my tree, right? And then someday somebody was using my tree and it was just like being inside the gym. I almost wanted to say, hey, can I work in with you? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, get out, it's my tree. How dare you use that picnic table right by the tree where I'm gonna look like a fool if I start working out by you. Go to a different table, get out of here. <laughs> Yeah, you develop an eye for these sorts of things when you start to have that awareness of where the trees, where's a hill I can do sprints on, where's a, and uh, we we actually near that park, I found this place, I got to take a picture of it. It's like this unbelievable, perfect picturesque place, tree with a perfect limb for suspension work, oh, nice. there's a hill for sprints and everything, it looks over the pond, sunset, wow. it is so idyllic and yeah, it, you don't know that stuff is there. And I'm like, oh, I'll take this over any fancy gym any day. It's perfect. Right? Oh, it's yeah, exactly. Beautiful. I got like ducks walking around me as I'm doing oh. pull-ups and stuff. It's great. Wonderful. So, Al, any parting words of encouragement and wisdom for the week? Oh, boy. Let's see here. Oh, eat your vegetables, brush your teeth, and floss, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have a Zoom workshop coming up. We'll have... Uh, uh, core strength for cycling. I got a, a Zoom link there. Hopefully, we'll get that in there. And I'm going to talk about how to program for working out so you can get off the bike or get stronger off the bike. So that way, when you're on it, you'll have a lot more fun. I'm talking about all the boring stuff like basics and isometrics and basic push and basic squat and basic pull. It'll be very un Insta worthy information you're going to get. But if you want to get faster on your bike, it's the kind of stuff you should be doing. Hell yeah. That's the stuff that works the best. That's the stuff that's most accessible that we yep. overlook, but that's the stuff that's most effective and all the fancy, hard to do, hard to reach stuff. That's actually the stuff that's probably less effective in the long run. So on those words of wisdom there, I will bid you, dear listener, adieu. Until next week, this is Al Painter and myself, Matt Chifley. Again, all links are down below reminding you to stay strong and lead by example.